that might be watching this this uh, presentation, this show, I'd like to move to, to vote on this in one way or the other. I'll move that we not support. We're going to have a motion before us not to support. Any other discussion? Thinking. No, we've had no. I have more, but we have no. <laughs> All set. Hearing none, the, the motion before us is not to support question two. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? There is unanimity on the board. Um, <laughs> Yay. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rowe. I uh, hope he agrees. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Rowe, well, Mr. Rowe's position was uh, he is not in favor of question two if it was for the school proposal as presented at our meeting, but he was to be in favor of it if it was for the new proposal which hasn't been made yet. Let's not get on that route again. So, I haven't seen it. Question three. And again, this is the one on the uh, Swan Pond Elementary School proposal. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vino. I want to be sure I get the right number here. I moved to, to, su right. to support ballot question number three. Is there a second? The chair will second for the purposes of the discussion. Who would like to have any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, 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 have uh, I don't make a quick. You do. Yeah. Well, I may then. And, uh, <laughs> I, and, I, and, and I will make it quick. And, and basically, it's for the reasons I'm against it, is for the reasons that you reiterated too earlier about the town administrator and the police building committee. That before you go forward with an appropriation for a building, you generally look at your borings your soil consistencies and everything else, which you were reiterated to, and I hope you can remember your statement, that you said uh, the wise decision was made by the town administrator and, and the police building committee to do the boring testings, look at the soil consistencies, make sure you can, in fact, put a building there. That's one reason I'm totally opposed to the Swan Pond School. They have no septic system design, as they said at the town meeting, that all the engineering was done but they have no septic system designed. They haven't contacted the Board of Health to do any testing. I checked with them again today. They have no, uh, they, in fact, they're, they're talking about now rather going with a septic system that they want to go possibly with a sewer treatment plant, and that was at a discussion with the Community Plan Board on the 24th. They have no water supply. If you notice the height of the tower that they're putting up there, it's 88 feet in the air. Uh, every foot of uh, column of water goes up in the air, and this is 88 feet, so for every foot, that water goes up in height. It exerts a pressure of 0.434 pounds at the base of the stack, which means that they've got probably 40 pounds of pressure at the base of the stack, which will tell you that they don't have enough water to meet the uh, state standards for water supply um, for the new school. The other thing is uh, that has always bothered me all along is they've only got um, 100 parking spaces out there of cars, and they were asked that question, um, how many of those 100 have uh, parking lots would be utilized by the school and the answer was 67 percent which means 67 cars that allows 33 cars for uh, attendance at functions at, at the school um, there's just a, a host of reasons why i can't support that i mean you you, you just can't go forward with a, a request for 14 million dollars in actual construction cost with another nine to ten million dollars in interest <coughs> charges on top of that to construct a building without doing your borings, your soil consistency tests, your geological studies. And if you remember, they fought very, very diligently to get $25,000 at the October town meeting that they were gonna have all these geological studies done before November 7th. They still haven't done them. And now they're going forward and their feeling is, and the architect again, who's Todd Lee, has said, well, we don't think we have to do it. Let's see if we get the money first and then we'll do the geological studies. That's like putting the chicken ahead of the egg or putting the egg ahead of the chicken or, or however that saying goes. It just doesn't make sense. And anybody that's in the construction field will tell you, you do not ask for an appropriation for a building before you do your studies. So I am totally against this one corn school for those reasons. And a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> those are the main ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm opposed to the uh, Swan Pond, and part of the reason I'm opposed is that uh, we've been told for five years that the batch holder was not reimbursable. 
And if we had known that probably four years ago, we'd have an alternative in place now. Uh, the bulge in the school system is in the, uh, I believe, third and fourth grade. As uh, evidenced by the transcript picture two weeks ago, there was a kindergarten class of 16 kids. Um, so I'm not convinced that there's a bulge coming through. I believe it's already there, and we do need to concentrate on the middle school and probably the high school. Um, I you know, sat next to Christine Lynch, as I said at that meeting, and um, she was talking about the rehab in the batch, and she said, oh no, unless you're gonna do something to the batch, like add classrooms and, and work on the uh, ADA requirements, I, and I looked at her and I said, yeah, we are. Oh, well, no one ever said that to me. <coughs> so um, I think that uh, you know the town should have known that quite a while ago. And that kind of, you talk about credibility, I think that kind of shades my credibility quite a bit. You asked somebody else? You mean not your Mike, but the question of their credibility, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sure you wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Um, I think uh, performance speaks to credibility. I look at the uh, little school project. I look at the hood school project, which I was happy to be there the other, uh, yesterday for the ribbon cutting and what a beautiful facility that the town paid for and built up there at the hood school and the same at the little school. And fabulous job in the school building committee. And it's all done within budget. They didn't come back and ask for another dime. Um, these are the same groups of people here are working under the same constraints, public bidding constraints. Uh, I have an awful lot of faith in these people who have spent literally thousands of hours away from their family, and who are all taxpayers in this community, just like you and I, um, toiling away, looking at the plans, and crossing the T's and dotting the I's, and making sure that uh, not an extra dime is spent unnecessarily, and the money goes where, it, where it's best spent, and, and not coming back to this community looking for 10 cents above and beyond the appropriations that they sought uh, for those for those projects. I think that speaks to credibility. The performance level of the school building committee, school committee, the architectural firm uh, that all have oversight uh, in these particular projects and have come to successful completion. I mean, terrific job that they've done. Uh, and this is the same group of people now that are proposing the Swan Pond School. Uh, I think a lot of the issues that are being brought up here now, again, again smoke and mirrors. You know, confuse the people, raise some doubt, try and defeat it again for whatever purposes it is. I, I think there's a multiple of, multitude of purposes uh, being served and put forth here. But I think, uh, again, we have danced around this issue long enough. Uh, we have cost ourselves millions of dollars. Uh, we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on studies, and we're looking to study some more. Um, in the meantime, look at the, the growth figures, look at the enrollment figures. I mean, I have kids in the school right now, so I can see what's happening here. I coach in the, in the Little League and soccer programs. Those programs are bursting at the seams. We have five-year-old uh, T-ball, the Little League thing, that has grown by leaps and bounds. These are kids that aren't even in the system yet. Um, I welcome, come on down, Sunday afternoon, look at the T-ball crowd. You know? When you walk into the Memorial Day Parade, if you do a successful again in your election, look at the number of kids on the side of the road. It's different than what was there five years ago. Uh, the projected numbers are real. And again, they, they've actually uh, been underestimated. Uh, we haven't hit the bubble. We're not building to a bubble. And again, you're going to hear what you want to hear. And the selective hearing and selective facts, I think, is very unfair to be presented to the public. The performance of the school building committee over the last Ten years, starting with the again the, uh, the high school renovation, and then you're going forward with the uh, with the elementary school proposals, uh, the two that have been successfully completed, the one that we're looking to do now, and again with the middle of the high school. Uh, the undermining uh, of their efforts is so counterproductive and so costly. We have to stop. We need to move forward. I believe this particular proposal is the right one for the town economically. I think it's going to meet the elementary school needs for the uh, again they're, they're talking for the next 40 years as far as uh, housing uh, close to, what, 60% of the school population in this new facility. I think it's important, that, again, that we move forward and retain the bachelor of the school as school administration, public meeting space, and uh, public access space as far as uh, the green space that uh, we currently enjoy by the fields, and hopefully we'll get some grass on the fields. Um, 
So I, I believe this is the proposal that should be supported. I think the school building committee was correct in their assessment. I think the finance committee was correct in their assessment. I think the school committee was correct in their assessment. And I think Mr. Vito and I were correct in our assessment as to which proposal is the most cost effective way of meeting the needs of our school students, securing the uh, uh, property values of every taxpayer. And again, everybody has a vested interest in this, whether you have a kid in school or not. It's going to cost everybody something. And the delaying has costed us more. Uh, modular classrooms, which is what you're looking at, um, and the temporary stopgap measure, if this doesn't, uh, doesn't go, it's going to be astronomical. You're going to need an override for modular classrooms. So to me, let's move forward, move on, support the Swan <coughs> School question three. Mr. Fagan. Yeah, I just have uh, one question. I don't know if Joe writes some notes. He probably wants to talk. No, 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 no. I'm writing a note. I want to find out something different. But let me do this. What, just one question I have. Why, when Mr. Smith and I talk, is it smoke and mirrors? And when you talk, it's truth. I guess probably my, my <laughs> because all I've seen from you is ideas and this proposal. See, that's a bad thing. coming forward. No, oh, it's a great thing. A it's thing? a wonderful thing. But the interesting part is that both of you gentlemen supported the Swan Pond School at some point in your career here. Correct. And you've abandoned it for whatever reasons. Um, well, I, I, I would have to know, say... So that means you were mistaken uh, before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You bring up... By the, smoke and mirrors, we're talking about plans that have drawn $750,000. He asked me a question. He asked me a question. $750,000 that were spent, uh, taxpayers' money to put forth these uh, schematic designs and plans, it's ready to go. There's no more mystery here. We know what the cost is. We, you know what you're getting. You know exactly what it is and what it's going to do for you. I still don't know what you're supporting. I still don't know what you're in favor of, other than something else. And I'm saying to you, as a taxpayer, I can't afford to wait for you anymore. Will you be here? Well, obviously the majority of taxpayers can. You know, can, can afford to wait because yeah, they I are waiting. Bill million dollar savings. Set, Bill Smith supposedly. and I are two votes. It's been defeated by many more than two votes. 45% said yes. Fifty-five percent said no. Well, and you had the police station people in with you last time. Well, what you keep saying no. Now, and Mr. Venezia in one of the round tables here said there were 230 kids coming into the kindergarten. Uh, I believe they have at least 11 kindergarten classroom spaces, possibly 12. That brings it down to less than 20 kids per classroom. I went to a ribbon cutting yesterday up at the Hood School with a beautiful new wing on there with a library an art room and a music room. And they are absolutely beautiful facilities. How many classrooms See were new? The, kiss the uh, art room goodbye, kiss the music room goodbye, until you solve the housing needs in the, in the, new, in the uh, back of the school district. Because you know, they're shipping the kindergarten that's up there. I understand that. They're taking up these vital specialty areas, which, are, which is what they've been built for. And you know, uh, I don't want to be labor, but it's, it's a wonderful facility that isn't even going to be utilized for its, for its intended purpose because we're not getting off the dime and moving forward. How many new classrooms were built in that school? The number of classrooms that were built in that school were, were based upon the capacity of the core facilities, which this board supported, by the way. No, they weren't. Which they were not based on the core facilities because the core facilities could have, uh, you could have added two more classrooms because they planned on full day kindergarten. Full day kindergarten never happened. They could have put and two more classrooms there. The, the state may it won't. It. The state won't mandate it because they can't afford to retrofit all the schools. Well, the thing is, they were built to the core facilities there, and this board supported it. And when they supported the addition to the hood school, and they supported the addition to the little school, they also supported part two, which was the new Swan Pond School. And what's happened is we've added to the middle. We've added to the two other elementary schools based upon a plan which, again, hasn't been followed through as far as that third piece, which is actually number two. I believe the plan was not accepted in its entirety. No, but when the, but when the plan was put forth for the little school proposal, it was, if you're going to do this, you have to do that. Because if you don't do this, or if you accept this particular proposal, and not go with the new Swan Pond School, you're looking at spending good money at a bad deal here. Because it's not going to meet our needs. We need the new school facility and the number of classrooms that we're talking about. So you're saying lack of maintenance of the batch was part of that? Not plan? at all. Not at all. Okay. How come it started five years ago when the master plan for the school started? You know, Mr. Bagan, this board supported that overall plan. The board supported it in an overall structure, and the board supported it piecemeal. And now all of a sudden the majority of the board has deviated from the plan with some other people for something else. How many uh, people have come and gone on this board since then? 
Well, there's still some members who were here. Who's the question? There's still some people who were here. Mr. Right. Vito, you wish to speak? I'm sorry. No, I must. I must. I just had one quick thing. <coughs> Steve, I, 